So I just wanted to do a quick demo of how you might do a Nova in, uh, in R or so something like that, okay? So I'm assuming you guys would gather your data somewhere, okay? And so here I'm just setting up a little like, Excel sheet. And so I'm just going to input the, uh, the same, same values that we used, okay? Now, you can save yourself some trouble if you use letters for your groups, okay? So, um, and you want to store all of your values in one column. So we have 8, 16, and 9. Those are the values of our first group, and I'm just going to call them group A, all right? And then so one column would be the group, and uh, the next column would be the value. So I've got group B. This is what we have. And then the last group. OK. You don't want to, I, I know in the, uh, the book, they have um, three columns of data. But you don't want to create three columns of data. That's going to confuse the computer. So you want to create one column for all of the data points, and then you put the group assignments in the, uh, in the other column. Okay. So then you would save this as uh, like an Excel, not Excel. Uh, where should I save this? We'll save it to the desktop, and we'll save it as a CSV. That uh, seems to be... Easy to read. That's fine. I'm going to lose some formatting. Oh, wait, what? Okay. Let me just make sure it showed up here. Yeah, so book1.csv, and we're going to read this into uh, R. Oh, sorry. Ignore all of this. Okay, so I'm going to just do import data set from text file, book1.csv. Okay, and uh, I think you guys already had to do something like this, but, uh, and it, it's pretty good. It picks up on this heading, yes, comma, whatever. Okay, so we do that. Strings as factors, sure. We import that, and this, now we have our data here. Okay, and so we can do um, ANOVA, and there's there's a few ways we can do it. Uh, I'm going to use, there's two functions. One is ANOVA, and the other one is AOV for analysis of variance. Um, why is this not working? So we have AOV, and you have uh, uh, ANOVA. So they're, they're both... Uh, or similar. So I'm, I'm going to use AOV, okay? And I have book one and a book one dollar sign group shows uh, our group values and then book one dollar sign value shows what we have. So I'm going to create um, a model. I'm going to store the results of AOV into a model. And what you want to do is it says formula. If you look at the help for analysis of variance model, it talks about formula. And so what we want to say is explain the v values by the group. So I'm going to say book one dollar sign value. And I'm going to use this tilde to say explain the values with the group variable. And that's it. Okay, and then if I say, okay, well, tell me what model is, it shows me um, is this what I want. Yeah, sum of squares and degrees of freedom. Let me uh, do summary of our model, and this will return our um, ANOVA table that we created by hand. Okay. And so this is a you know very simple, straightforward way to um, to perform ANOVA analysis. So you create the model by using the function AOV, 
and you would say, well, explain the values by the group. And then if you ask for the summary, you get the ANOVA table. And you can see the p-value associated with uh, the group variable. Okay, The within group um, is R calls residuals, and that's probably actually the more common language uh, is to call this. Um, your source is going to be the different sources plus, and then the last one will be residuals. And you see that these values match exactly um, the ones we calculated by hand. Okay, so so anyway, the computer can do all of this very quickly, <laughs> but it, I think it's good to know. You know, the sum of squares value. Now you kind of have an idea of, of what it means. You're, you're breaking apart that total variance into two components. Okay, and then you got the mean squares, and then the f value, and it calculates the uh, the p value for you. Okay. So that's that. Um, if you wanted to create more complicated things, and so I'm going to just mention um, briefly, talk about the other forms of ANOVA. Okay. So in terms of computations, you are required only to know one way ANOVA. I'm suddenly like getting shivers and it's cold. <laughs> um, forgot to talk to the, uh, the air conditioning people and say, you know, we don't need air conditioning at 9 p.m. at night, so. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so other forms of ANOVA. Yes? You, you don't need it. I mean... Yeah, I use I leave the total row there because it helps me find degrees of freedom residuals, um, especially if you have. Why well, I, I never do ANOVA by hand, to be honest. Only when I'm teaching this class. But um, if we were to have multiple sources of variation, so if we have uh, more than one grouping variable, um, it's usually easiest to get the degrees of freedom for the within or the residual group by doing everything else adds up to the total. So if you have, just for total DF, you have, if you have that somewhere, you can find the, the last um, uh, degrees of freedom value. Um, but yeah, there's no real need to have total sum of squares because it just, you're just adding up the other numbers, okay? I guess, I guess it's there for more like a pedagogical value and saying like, we're breaking apart the total variance into these different components. Uh, so, so it's there to illustrate that. Okay, but but if you understand that, you, there's no need to bother calculating it. Okay, so we have other forms of ANOVA. All right, and so one is um, blocked. Uh, rand is it randomized block? ANOVA, or what is this? Let me just say blocked. <laughs> What's the official name of this thing? Oh, the one-way randomized block design is what it's called. One-way randomized block design. All right, so let me let me just explain the concept behind this. No, I hate to say you won't be tested because then your brain just checks out and you don't. Um, I, I, you're, there's no math that's going to be tested, um, but this concept of blocking an experiment uh, is value valuable. Maybe I should put a question on those blocking <laughs> concept, I don't know, okay? But it's, it's, it's a good thing to keep in mind, okay? When you're designing an experiment, part of the thing, you, you, you want to know, generally you want to know if a treatment has an effect, okay? And you want to isolate the effect of the treatment. So in terms of, like with the St. John's work paper, you wanted to know, is there a difference between those who take placebo, I mean, the, the, is there a difference between the effect 
of placebo versus St. John's wort. Okay, and there's this whole section on the exclusion criteria and all of this and how they pick their people and um, whatnot. That is all to say they wanted the two groups to be as identical as possible so that if we were to observe a difference, that difference can be attributed to the treatments. Okay, because let's say when they assigned the groups, let's say um, one group was all boys and one group was all girls. Okay, and then we gave them um, St. John's wort and we gave the girls St. John's wort and the boys um, placebo. And let's say we see a difference at the end of the results. Well, then someone can say, well, the result isn't because of St. John's wort versus placebo is because one group was a bunch of girls and the other group was a bunch of boys. Okay, you want to isolate the effects okay, of each, of each thing. You don't want your, um, your treatment to be confounded with any of the other factors. Sorry, I feel like um, I'm shivering here, so my voice is all like <laughs> jittery. <laughs> okay, so anyway, we want to isolate um, the effect of the treatments, and we use a block design to help us do that. Blocked design to help us isolate the effects of treatments. Okay, so here's a silly example. Let's say you have um, you you're doing some kind of experiment, okay? And um, I don't know you're growing a bunch of plat plants and so this is a top-down view and you've got a, a bunch of different plants okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. something like this okay and you want to know you're gonna try three different fertilizers okay or I don't know what what helps plants grow like fertilizers for like the ground and soil but whatever you're gonna try three different fertilizers and let's say in your building you have a window right here okay so there's a window and as the days go by you know the areas closest you know you have more Sun over here and less Sun okay so the worst design that you could possibly do in this scenario oh look at this because I've got this handy dandy tool I can like duplicate this okay oh, yeah. this would have taken forever if I had the uh... how does this work Okay, so let's say we have three different fertilizers, okay? Now, a bad design would be to use um, one fertilizer for these plants, another fertilizer for these plants, and another fertilizer for these ones, okay? Because these ones all get more sun, these ones get less sun, and these ones get the least amount of sun. And so at the end of the experiment, if you see that these plants grew the most and these ones grew the least, you don't know if it's because different effect of fertilizer or different amounts of sunlight. Okay, so this would be a bad design because your treatment effect is confounded with the sunlight. On the other hand, you could do a, just a complete random design, okay? Full random. And with full random, okay, 
maybe these uh, end up uh, with that fertilizer and these ones end up uh, with this one or something and I don't know and then uh, the re remaining so this is a true random design or something like this you just randomly assigned the things okay now this helps uh, alleviate some of this but because it's random you still could end up with a situation where you know you end up with more reds in the front and more blues in the back okay so you're um, the sunlight effect is still slightly confounded with the different fertilizers okay so um, not as confounded but because of random assignment we still have you know more blue in the back and uh, and whatnot okay so uh, so it is still slightly confounded okay so we have a block design and you would create blocks okay and you would say okay you know what I got to do something about this so I'm going to create three blocks okay the um, this one up front that's one block and we want to make sure that we have uh, well, it's gonna be a little bit tough but um, you want to try to get each of these equally represented okay and so in this case you know it might be tough when you have um, and you just randomly assign them within each block so here we might not make use of these three over here but we're going to just make sure that the three different fertilizers are equally represented in each block okay so you do random assignment within the blocks and this helps uh, avoid the confounding problem that we uh, we have in the other situations okay so this is a blocked design and each treatment is equally represented in each block And so that way we avoid um, getting uh, confused. So we're, we're probably still going to see that these plants up here and the more sun is going to grow the most and these ones in the back with the least amount of sun are going to grow the least. But at least the effect of the sunlight will not be confounded with the effect of the fertilizers. Okay. probably see um, plants with most sun grow the most okay but the treatment confounded with the blocks Okay. So that is a uh, randomized block design. Does that make sense to everyone? So you're still doing random assignment within the block, but you're making sure each treatment is equally represented in the blocks.
Okay, and so in the ANOVA analysis, um, the uh, you say each value y is made up of grand mean plus effect due to um, treatment. plus effect due to the block. Plus random individual variation. In your ANOVA table, you would have um, treatment. So this is your between groups. You're basically splitting up between groups into treatment, blocks, residuals. And uh, we won't worry about the individual calculations here, okay? But we're, we're splitting up the um, total variance into treatments, blocks, and residuals. Uh, maybe I, I should say uh, we use most often blocks are most frequently used when we know or suspect that another factor has an effect on our response. Has an effect on our response. But we do not really care to measure it. to measure. I don't want to say measure, actually. Uh, uh, don't say we do not really care. I'm going to say, um, but it is not the factor of interest. Okay. Uh, we're always interested in the treatment. So that is the one-way randomized block design. The, uh, the book expands on the math there. I'm not, you don't have to worry about the math, OK? And then, um, and then the other one is two-way ANOVA. Yeah. Okay, so we have two-way ANOVA, and with two-way ANOVA, uh, and I'll just say two-way ANOVA and uh, other factorial designs, so again, um, if you were to take a design of experiments class, they would expand on all of this. Um, so two-way ANOVA is basically you have two factors that are of interest to you. 
factors are of interest. And there might be an interaction between the factors. So um, what could be, so if, and the idea here is maybe, um, uh, yeah, we'll have each individual value y is equal to the grand mean plus the treatment effect 1 plus treatment effect 2 plus the interaction, and I don't know what the, uh, what is the symbol we use for interaction, gamma. Okay, so this is uh, effect factor 1, effect factor 2, and this is the interaction of the factors. Plus individual random variation that we can't get rid of. Okay, and so um, let me let me try to think of an example here. Uh, I, I don't have a I don't have a good example. Um, maybe. Completely, uh, my, my brain is uh, pulling a blank here. You know, sometimes, I don't know, let, let's say there was medication to affect um, blood pressure or something, okay? Maybe there's two different medications, and in general, this is a bad idea. You, would, you wouldn't want to mix medications, but maybe medication one reduces blood pressure on average, I don't know, five points, okay? And then medication two also reduces blood pressure by five points, okay? Um, now, in a patient, uh, when, you, when you take your blood pressure medication, uh, a lot of effects in life, you just, effects are additive. You just say, okay, well, if you do this, then this change happens. And if you do this, then this change happens. And, uh, and if you do both things, then you just add up the effects, okay? Now, in terms of some things, like medications and other things, don't work that way. So if maybe if you took both medication one and medication two, you would expect you would have a five point plus a five point drop in blood pressure if that was the effect of each medication individually. But maybe the combination of the two can have a drastic 30 point drop or something like that, okay? Or, or maybe they cancel each other out, who knows, okay? If there's an interaction like that where you're not just adding the effects of factor one and factor two together, but there's something else going on, then you have what we call an interaction effect. And two-way ANOVA uh, allows for that, okay? And your sources, if you were to create a source, uh, make a table, you'd have factor one, factor two, and then interaction, and um, residual for total variation, okay? And you're breaking apart your variation into these four different things. So that would be um, two-way ANOVA, okay? So you don't have to worry about um, the math behind two-way ANOVA and all of this stuff, uh, blocked designs and things like that. I would say it's good to know these concepts for block design. And again, 
Um, if you were to study more statistics, I think a good class to take after this would be uh, ANOVA or uh, Design of Experiments. They go, well, ANOVA, Design of Experiments are will almost always be the same class. Or uh, the next chapter, which is Linear Regression, uh, another class that might be good is re on Regression. Um, I would say both of those would be worth your while if you were, uh, want to study more statistics. Okay. Uh, let me just talk a tiny bit about, you've got one last lab assignment, and it's to uh, read, uh, where did it go? Oh, I don't want to use, uh, what? Okay, well, we'll have to wait for Firefox to update. Meet hello, what is this? I have no idea. Okay. I didn't ask for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this last lab, and I struggled to find um, an interesting article. I, that's interesting enough, but... Um, Let's look at this, okay? Uh, so the paper is called Age-Related Differences and Factors Associated with Smoking Initiation. I was looking for a journal article, health-related, that used one-way ANOVA. And every every article I found used like two-way or some other form of ANOVA, and it defeated the point of the uh, exercise. Okay, but this was this one used one-way ANOVA, and basically they just wanted, they looked at a bunch of people, they surveyed a bunch of people who smoked or former smokers, and they said, uh, you know, how old are you? Are you a man or a woman? You know, what what is your race? All of these different things, and they wanted to know, is, is there a relationship between these different demographic characteristics and the age at which they started smoking, okay? So we look here and it says the average age went for when men started smoking was 16.8 years and the average age for when women started smoking, women started smoking was 18.3 years, okay? And if we did a t-test, is there a significant difference between 16.8 and 18.3? We get a p-value of 0 0.001. So yes, there is a significant difference between the age at which men and women started smoking. Over here, if we looked at ethnicity, uh, they surveyed three, three ethnicities, uh, non-Hispanic white, Hispanic, and African-American. And they looked at the different ages at which um, the different ethnicities st started smoking. And these were the, the results. And so because you have three groups here, you would have to do one-way ANOVA. Okay, and so if you did one-way ANOVA for ethnicity, so these uh, these numbers, the p-value ended up being 0 0.001, okay? Or you can do um, high school attainment, you know, people who didn't finish high school started smoking on average at 16 and a half years old. People who had some high, uh, high school or, 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 I'm sorry, who finished high school or who had some college or finished college they smoke, start smoking at different ages, okay? And so is there a significant difference between at least one of these, okay? Because again, the question is not which one is different, but is at least one different? The answer seems to be yes, okay? And so what I wanted you to do in this week's lab was to pick one of these things and just see if you can kind of... Um, get this p-value on your own by doing a calculation by hand, okay? And so you'd have to calculate the grand mean, which is around 17.5, okay? And you would do this, and you would take the difference. So all the information you need with the standard deviation and the mean is available to you uh, to do these calculations by hand. So you have um, questions of uh, demographic characteristics, and then the, the other part of the survey was, um, you know, how much do you smoke and like things related to smoking habits. So 
People who smoke less than a pack a day started on average around 18.3 years. People who smoke over a pack a day started at 17.2 years, okay? Is there a significant difference? Yes, okay? You know, is there a difference between those who, um, whatever, have a low or high nicotine yield? These, these types of questions. Does that make sense? Okay. I was looking, I don't know, if you find an article for One Way ANOVA, something, um, I, I would love to, uh, to see it. Uh, that, that's maybe more interesting. Or maybe this is interesting to you, but don't feel like you have to read through. I would just say skim the um, introduction, okay? And, I mean, if you really want to read about participant recruitment and all of this, that's up to you, okay? Uh, but I'm not going to, I don't have a bunch of questions related to the structure of the, um, the study, okay? Just see if you can recreate these uh, ANOVA values yourself. So, uh, simple lab. And uh, that's all I have for today, okay? So we'll, uh, we'll end a little bit early.